Hey, Coach. Um, I'm wondering what, what you've liked about your defense sort of overall in this series. I think that's sort of been the one, the, the side of the floor that's been a little bit more consistent from game to game. I, I'm curious what you've liked best about it. Well, John, I just think that, um, you know, other than in game one, you know, uh, we didn't we weren't really switch on to game one. But other than that game, I think we've tried hard. Right? I think there's been some effort and some desire and some toughness and, and trying to carry it through for most possessions. You know, each possession seems to be pretty critical in a playoff game. And we're getting to the point where we're playing most of the possessions as, you know, as, as we're trying hard, you know, we're making some mistakes and they got good players and they make shots and some things like that. But, but we're, we're down and trying to, trying to compete, I think, is the biggest thing. What's the biggest, most important factor in defending them in the half court? Um, well, let's see. Let me see if I can pick, pick one. If I can pick <laughs> one, uh, what's most important? Well, I mean, it's always most important that we get them in the half court. And I know you asked me once you get them in the half court. I mean, it's probably containing the ball and, and you know, trying as best we can to keep keep the ball in front of us. Appreciate it. You're welcome, John. Next question goes to Doug Smith from the Toronto Star. Uh, you had said that your guys hadn't played really well as a group for even in the win. Did you feel tonight you looked more like yourselves for longer? Well, yeah, Doug, I think we played, we played, you know, we played some ball tonight. Look, look like, yeah, it looks like the team we remember a lot, a lot tonight, right? I mean, I thought we, for, for, for the most part of the game, I thought we made really excellent decisions at the offensive end. We just kept probing and, and looking and, passing and finding good shots and then and then guys stepped up and made some big ones when we needed them too and you need that because they're they're guarding very well too and then i already talked about i think the effort on defense was was yeah. very team team orientated you mentioned very very often that surge seems to finish games well but tonight he sure started off fast what what do you uh, attribute that well you know he came in and he came in, Doug, and hit a trail three, kind of real quick. Um, that always helps. That always that always gets a spring in Serge's step when he when he gets to see his first shot go in. And then I think right after that there was a as a timeout, like literally right after he hit that one, and and we ran a little set for him to get another one, and he bet he wasn't even really that open, and he made it made that one too. So good good start shooting, and I thought he did a good job protecting the rim at times too. Thanks very much, Nick, as always. Appreciate it. Welcome, Doug. Next question goes to Josh Lewenberg from TSN. Hey, Nick. Uh, becoming a bit of a trend, Kyle, getting off to these really good starts, really aggressive starts in these really big games. You compared game three the other night to game six against Golden State. How much does it help in terms of getting the other guys going and sort of setting the tone for the game, maybe something that was lacking in general in game one when Kyle's the guy to come out and do it? Well, I think that when 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 he does it, I mean, I, I want to say that when anybody comes out that aggressive, it usually gives us a boost. But but he obviously is our team leader and our veteran, right? And when he does it, I think it automatically gets everybody like, you know, a, 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 a burst of energy, focus, and um, confidence. I, I I was happy with the confidence that we look like we shot the ball with tonight. You know, even even guys that didn't really make that many or a high percentage still kept shooting them in rhythm and and like they were going to make them, and that's that's uh, uh, that's a that's a big step forward from where we were a few games ago. Thanks, Nick. Have a good night. You're welcome, Josh. You too. Next up, we have Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Hey, Nick. Um, just wondering when, when I think Kyle was at uh, 44 minutes, pretty much the whole second half again, do you check on him at all? Do you just, or do you just kind of roll him out there and, and pay no attention? Or do you kind of ask him, are you okay? Do you need a blow? Uh, he is old. Yeah. I mean, I did, uh, I did, I did check with him, but a couple of times I was just joking. I asked him if he needed a sub with a kind of smile, I, you know, he chew me out, you know, like, <laughs> no, I don't need one. I was like, I know I was just, you know, I was kind of kidding. Um, but we do check and ask them and tell them we got some timeouts, you know, if they need a rest, you know, and we, you probably saw us take one with 
3.50 to go there. We had one to burn. It felt like it was just a rest timeout. I thought we got a really, really big boost on the challenge. There was a big, big point where we were playing with those frantic, and that was another big resting point, you know, for our guys. So I think our guys are used to playing. I mean, not this many minutes, but they're used to playing heavy minutes, and they're certainly used to playing in this intensity in playoff games. So they're okay. Another question on Kyle. I mean, it's. I'm sure you don't get tired of talking about it, but um, there's what that one sequence I think in the third quarter where he really went out of his way to get Fred, Fred a couple of uh, triples. Like he, he made some really nice little simple plays to to find Fred was in rhythm. Found him a couple of times. I think he found Serge for one. Just that aspect of his game, his awareness of who's kind of flowing and 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 the plays he can make to get the guy the ball at the right time. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like it, Michael, because I think he has that kind of somewhat predetermined, you know, he crosses midcourt and I think he, he realizes where he's going to take the ball to and who he thinks might might be open. You know, he's not always right. Sometimes the ball sails out real high towards somebody that isn't open, but, but a lot of times he is right and he is being very unselfish. And so what we say, we say good offense is, is, is drawing more than one defender. And then, then hitting the open man, and that's that's what he's doing there. Appreciate it, Nick. Have a good evening. You too, Michael. Up next, we have Blake Murphy from the Athletic. Hey, Coach. Um, you'd mentioned a couple times recently that you were pretty happy with at least some of the threes that you guys were getting. Um, you know, tonight a few more of them dropped, but still not to to your team's normal average. Were you happy? Uh, or happier rather with the process side and the type of threes you guys were creating as they kind of changed up their their defense? I was extremely happy, Blake. We made a lot of them. We had a whole bunch go on, a whole bunch more go in and out in a stretch, but they were they were very, very good looks. Yeah, very happy. Oh, thank you. Yep. Next question goes to Stephen Lung from Sportsnet. Hey, coach. Just uh, again about that three-point shooting. Was was it just a, a matter of, of like the the guys just finally finally making threes tonight? Uh, just just because like a uh, like a lot of the looks tonight looked did, were similar to the ones from the previous three games. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the analytics guys will tell you this stuff balances out over time, right? Um, when some of them are going in, uh, I think it seems like the looks are a lot better. I got to watch the tape. It, it felt to me like they were a little better tonight than they've been. Um, but I'll, I have to watch the tape. But but again, I think like, you know, I'll go back to like game two. Like Kyle was like, I don't know, for seven, one for seven. I can't really remember, but he didn't really have many open ones. Fred was two for 12 and he did have open ones, you know, so it's, a little bit of a little bit of hit and miss, but you got as you know, it's a make and miss league. We made a bunch of them tonight, and they did make a bunch. It's similar to similar to the way the first two games went, where we didn't make any, and, and they made a bunch. So, and how I guess how big a boost is, is that to to team morale when when the, your threes do do go in because it's such a big part of of your team's offense. Well, I think it, it it's always a boost for everybody when the ball goes in. I think it, it helps your defense. Too, it energizes you. We talked about that with Serge. I think it, I think it always helps. And then when they're not going in, it really you can see, you know, you can see energy drop and body language change and things like that. So it's it's big. I mean, everybody likes to watch their own shot go through the net, Stephen. <laughs> of course, of course. Thanks a lot, Coach. You're welcome, Stephen. Next, we go to Steve Simmons from the Toronto Sun. Hi, Nick. Um, you're a half a second away from being down 3-0. Now your series is tied. How much have you seen over the last few days the experience and championship pedigree of this team rise up to get you back in the series? Well, I think, I think there's certainly a lot there, Steve. I mean, I would say this. Um, our guys are used to playing big minutes in intense situations over long series, you know, six, seven, six series last year uh, in, a, in a five, you know, I think, and a lot of minutes for these guys. I think 
I think we didn't have very good rhythm coming into this series, and <clears throat> we needed to find some. It was gonna, it was gonna be, uh, we were gonna be in trouble, and now we we found some. We're playing a little better. It feels like I think really as a team and and certainly individuals are starting to to come come back to like, I mean like who we know they are and who they can be. So I think there's a lot of toughness in that in that that you're talking about. Yeah. And, and and did you see that right? I I thought it was, but did you see that right from the beginning tonight, where it looked like you guys came out with a certain control to the game, and and, and maybe a pace uh, that that Boston wasn't really expecting or, or ready to deal with. Yeah, I agree, and it's the first time all series that's happened. You know, even Game Three, which we which we were fortunate to win, we were chasing that thing. Man, we were down at ten and at the half, literally against the ropes. You know. We had to really come out fighting in that one to get back in there. But tonight we came out again, I thought, very poised on offense. We just kept getting really good shots and that that and and that kind of carried over to the other end of the floor. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome, Steve. All right, two more co uh, questions for you, Coach. First one goes to Jeff Zilgit from USA Today. Nick, I'm going to continue with the line of three-point uh, questioning. And I know it's more complicated than just making or missing a shot, but you know, how much do you go into the game thinking that the game is going to come down to the very fact that you're going to need to make threes on one end and defend them on the other, and that's going to be the deciding factor? Yeah. Um, I don't really know how to answer that. I think I, think, I, think I can say you're right. It is, it is, it is. You need to make some threes, and you need to stop them from making a bunch. And that's really been the story of the games, um, pro probably a lot of the games that are that are going on in the playoffs right now. Um, I don't know if it is as simple as that or not, but it kind of feels like it right now. Nick, just real quick, do you feel you spend a inordinate or a larger part of you know, game planning on that area? Um, I think <clears throat> the nights when it favors us, we spent just the amount of right, <laughs> right amount of time on it, and the nights it doesn't, we, we didn't. <laughs> we try. Thank to, you. Uh, no, we try. We try. Certainly, it's a, it's a huge part of the game, man. We're trying to we're trying to we're trying to defend them at a super high level and challenge them, and we're certainly trying to create good ones for our guys to step into and shoot them, Jeff, for sure. Thank you. All right, final question for you, Coach, goes to Sam Amick, who is Aaron Person from The Athletic. Hi, Nick. Kind of to Steve's question, uh, I wonder the character that your group has shown all year long. I mean, you can't beat the joy of a championship, but has there been a different kind of satisfaction for you to see – the way that they've done this all year to go down 2-0 to fight and still be in this thing like this? Well, um, I don't, I don't know if it's, it's satisfaction or a different kind. I mean, I'm, I'm one, one thing I've continually said is we don't really talk about last year very much. Right. And we don't think we're defending a, a title. We're, we're, we're just trying to get this team to do what they can do as high a level as they can. And that, that, that to me is, is the job. I don't, I don't, um, I don't feel especially satisfied about winning this game tonight or how we played. I, I think that's what we're supposed to do. You know, that's what we're working for. Get these guys to play as hard as they can and play together and, and get the result. And they'll just go back to work and try to try to do it a little better again tomorrow. And that's, that's kind of how we approach it. Yep. Thank you, coach. You're welcome. You're to, you're to Kyle Lowry of answering media questions. Why's that? Forty-eight minutes of. Uh, <laughs> you just, you just keep going.